Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and let us look at this topic together. Uh, you know, uh, we know that Muslims, they have a sect and we know that there's two major schools, you know, one is Shia and one is Sunni. And uh, the Quran teach Muslims you can do muta, which is you can rent a Muslim woman for a few hours uh, sexual relationship or for uh, a day or two as Muhammad he said so the Sunni they have a problem with this they cannot practice it supposedly because there is some reference that the Prophet uh, after the Prophet he died uh, the Caliphate they forbid it but there is many references no they did not they did not but still they want to do muta. So how we can do muta? Muslim women in the Middle East, they are suffering from a problem. Nobody is getting married. This is what they are saying. Uh, Muslim men, you know, they, they marry, uh, you know, usually a three, four, you know. But uh, they cannot, most of them, they cannot afford it no more to have four women in the bedroom. So they come with a new solution. It's actually, it's not new. I mean, this is old, but now it's became very popular. And the solution is that you can ask a woman to marry you, suppose it is in marriage, but she live whatever she live. Let us say uh, you, you met a woman, uh, she works somewhere, she have her own apartment or she live with her parents. And you like very much to have sex with her. You want to have sex with her, and she is desperate for a man in the bed. So what do you do? In Islam, everything is possible. You go to the woman, you say to her, listen, if you want me to sleep with you, that's very easy. Still, we can do it according to Allah teaching. I cannot pay you the worries. I cannot give you a house. I cannot leave you, make you live with me, but I can sleep with you. And I can give you cash from time to time. You know, each time I visit you, I give you like some dollars. What do you think? And because the women, they are not finding men supposedly according to the Muslims explanation. Because of that, this business is booming to the point now there's website doing this business. Uh, I looked for uh, some websites and for sure we want to find something official. So this is Islam uh, questions and answer, question and answer, very official Islamic website. Question number 82390. Question, Mr. Your marriage was mentioned in your website. What is this marriage? Is it halal? Halal means uh, kosher, like legal, according to uh, religion. Or it's haram, haram means forbidden. The answer, and you know, the Muslim one, they say, they start saying firstly and secondly, that's mean there's a lot of garbage happening. So firstly, Mr. Your marriage is where a man does a shara'i marriage. So it's oh, for sure it is sahih, you know, it's good. Okay. Contract with women meeting the conditions of marriage. So this is supposedly meeting the condition of marriage. So what the condition of marriage is sex. You see, I thought marriage is two people living together, having a family, um, taking care of their family. But if a marriage is, you go to a room when you are horny, and then you sleep with the women, and that is supposedly what is legal marriage is? In Christianity, the man, he leave his parents, and he will be with the woman, one, one person. Here, the Muslim man, what he do? 
he might be married to a woman full time in his bed. This is she got the job full time. This is supposed to she is the lucky one. And then he can hire other women who they are part time wives. You know, if a Muslim say this is not part time wife, she is a full wife, my friend, he see her from time to time. And for the purpose of sex. What not part time? The whole purpose of it is sex. He do not need a wife and he need and let me show you what the Muslim explanation is <clears throat> here it says uh, some married men read with me carefully some married men want to keep some women chaste because they need that what does that mean or because they need variety of and halal pleasure hmm? I mean, the man is doing you a service, and in the same time, he like to have different kind of a pleasure. Like this uh, wife, uh, Amina, uh, she have nice uh, body, but her, you know, uh, is small. The other woman, her uh, her name is Fatima. Uh, you know, her body is not too much, but her face is better. Uh, so you know, we get a variety of of uh, of women, so we can enjoy all kind of women according to Allah. And all of this will happen without affecting the first wife and her children. Very nice. Very nice. In some cases, a husband may want to cancel his second marriage from his first wife for fear of consequence that may result uh, after their relationship. What? What is that? I mean, you know, what is this? The man, look at this one now. This one is nicer. The man travel often to certain places and stay there for a length period. Okay. So because he stayed there for a long period without a wife, is it safer for him than not doing so? Mm -hmm. If you are a person who work in a, a, a marketing for a company, you travel from place to place, you don't want to have a wife in your house. Uh, come on so what do you do you got this wife who live by her own there is there are most uh, permanent reasons for the uh, emergency of kind of marriage secondly the scholars and here you know here the, the here, here the uh, like uh, the source of the stupidity of Islam. I mean, already you told the guy it's approved. Already you told him according to Sharia. Uh, already you told him it's okay. So now you are saying two, there is two kind of, uh, you know, scholars. But look, he says now, none of the scholars have said that it is invalid. So that's it. <clears throat> it is valid. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And the funny, the Muslims, uh, Sunni, they say we don't practice muta. Look here what he says. <laughs> the other day, this uh, uh, this allowed it because the consequence that it's adversely affect women, as it is deeming to her, uh, and that affect the society. This marriage contract take is taken advantage of by bad people. Oof. There is bad people, brother. There's bad people there. There's bad people there. You know, isn't it fun that you are going to Indonesia and then you marry a woman there? You don't even just like you know, you are doing like uh, what his name, Rabbi Toiva Singer. You know, he going from city to city, selling jewelries, so he can have four women in four cities. They live in their own, and they don't. He didn't pay them dowry, but he did give them cash from time to time. You know, he just have sex, and he is looking for variety of uh, women. You know, different size, different shape, different face, different hair, different balloon. You know. And look at the explanation. 
So all of this, uh, actually, I can post the link for you. So you can read it by your own. You know, when they want to read it all. Here we go, this is the link. Take your time. And now this marriage, or a form of prostitution, uh, the Muslims are promoting it everywhere. Like you go on your Facebook, you will find uh, advertising saying, uh, find Mr. marriage, find Ms. beautiful Mr. wife, find beautiful girls for Mr. marriage at Salam Habibi. I mean, what do you want more? Don't you want Salam Habibi? So if you are a person confused where to make an order for Mr. marriage, you go to Salam Habibi, all right? And then you make an order. <laughs> we have all kind of girls for you. Salam Habibi. <laughs> Salam Habibi. That's a lot of Habibi, my friend. Hmm? If you remember, Muhammad is a very decent man. I mean, we have to admit. And he was so decent to the point, he advised his followers that if two of you, men, one man, one woman, like to have sexual intercourse for a day or two, or even three, it's up to you. You can increase it or decrease it. And as you see, this is Sahih Bukhari. The Messenger of Allah said, if a man and a woman agree, and between two brackets it says temporarily marriage, that, that is not true. There is nowhere in Arabic it says temporarily marriage. Those are the Muslims who they are translating, trying to explain to you, this is what is temporary marriage. But this is not marriage. Because here it doesn't say to agree to marry. It says agree to do an ishra. Ishra means to sleep together. So if a man and a woman agree to do a ishra, sex and sexual intercourse, their sexual intercourse should last for three nights. And if they like to continue, they can do so. And if they want to separate, they can do so. Do you see it? And take to your attention that there is nowhere in the Quran it says you don't do this no more. No verse in the Quran. The Muslim they say we follow Allah order. Allah order says you do muta. This is chapter 4 verse 24. This is why Muslim Shia, uh, Shiaism is more accurate when it's come to this point to Islam. Shia until now they practice muta. And muta is more aggressive than than uh, the, the Messiah. Why? Because in muta, there's no limit about how many women you can rent them for sex. Let us say this month you can rent 24 or maybe 30. Here there's a limit of how many you can have in the same time. So the Muslim Sunni, they made themselves look like exactly there is a there is a, a, a uh, 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 karam, he is posting here in Arabic that there is a series in Saudi Arabia. It's called the Haya the Haya Halal. <clears throat> the Haya Halal. It's a series expose. It's like uh, you know actors, you know, and they speak about how those women they are used and abused and then because the series expose how filthy this cult is for sure they don't say islam is filthy you know they are speaking about this they are showing you a real from real stories of real people what happened to them by practicing this thing so because this thing or this series made a lot of 
exposure to how filthy Islam is without saying any word about Islam. Remember, those are in Saudi Arabia, the, the series. I think the series made the, the one who wrote it, I think it was a Syrian woman. She's a Muslim. And uh, I heard about it. I never watched it, but I saw an article. Uh, but what the what does the Siri does? It's showing you story for individual girls who did the Messiah marriage. How they became just a sex toy. And because of that, the government of Saudi Arabia they stopped the series immediately. The crowd Muslims got so angry. You see, the crowd Muslims they don't get angry for doing it. They get angry for seeing it. <laughs> Do you see the hypocrisy? They don't get angry practicing this. They get angry if you say to them, you are practicing this. And this is what they do with me. Muslim, they do all the stuff I say. They don't get angry from it. They get angry for I am saying it to them. Medical doctor, you don't debate me, my friend. Are you a Muslim? Mr. Medical doctor? Tell me, please, if you are a Muslim. <clears throat> so one of the hypocrisy is funny. Okay, medical doctor, but are you a Muslim, my friend? Are you? You found Muhammad in the Bible? I can find you many Muhammad in the Bible. Not only one. <clears throat> no problem, we can find you. Oh, you found him in Revelation 2010? Ah, that's nice. It's Revelation? It's revision 2010. I feel better about my English now. Okay. Obviously, you are very qualified to debate me. So, the Messiah marriage, the Messiah marriage is not a marriage. It's just you getting horny. You want to go and find the women. You know, you want to, even the Islamic Sheikh explain. Some men, they want to have different kind of women other kind of women maybe the women he have at home she became older she is not good in bed uh, but he will have to keep her because he have kids from her so if he divorce her he have to hire a nanny from Indonesia it cost him a lot of money so he keep the women who is a instead of a nanny you know but she is not good for sex so what we do we go and we look for women who they are younger they don't have a husband. They need a man in the bed. And instead of opening a house, cost me a lot and pay no worries. This woman, she is desperate. And she would agree. I will give her $15 when I go to her bedroom. Eh, okay, $10, $20. He is not responsible for anything about her. He don't pay for her rent. He don't pay for her housing. You don't need to pay for anything. Do we have any Muslim can tell us why those things happen in Islam? Any Muslim can tell us? What kind of religion this religion is? Anyone? And the funny, the name of the series, the Haya Halal, which means victims of what is Halal. If Halal make you victim, kosher. Any Muslim? And, you know, if you have my book, Sex and Allah, 
you will find they have many, 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 many other marriages. As an example, there's a marriage very similar to this one, very popular more in Yemen. It's called Zawaj friend. Zawaj friend. Let us find you. I don't know if I can find it in English. Uh, Zawaj friend. Here we go. I, I guess you know already what the word friend mean. You know, this is not Arabic word. Right? This is not Arabic word. And you will see how much they speak about it and how much popular it is. Uh, this is a fatwa. Somebody asking how uh, how much halal it is to have the wajah friend. The wajah friend simply, you have a friend, you want to sleep with her. As simple as that. I mean, the name is so clear, you know. You don't want really you want to get married and have a family, etc. You want to have just sex. Maybe you rent a hotel room or something, but supposedly she is, you are married now. The police cannot catch, you know, arrest you, says you are doing a fornication or no. So uh, the question is that, is that uh, lawful? Or what the problem in this name is, they, the Muslim, they say it is the, using the word a friend. He should not use the word a friend it's because it's an English word. This is the problem. <laughs> it is, you see, the problem is the friend thing. Should not call it friend, my friend. There's a problem in the name, but the, the practice is halal. I mean, do you see how silly they are? They are against the name to call it Zawaja friend. Let me show you. I will click translate to English. We have seen the statement of Sheikh Abdul Majid and Majid al Zindi, who wrote about a uh, 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 raised issue. It's called uh, marriage of a friend. <laughs> and, you know, uh, uh, may Allah preserve him. So he's a good Sheikh, you know. He said the problem with this thing, it was the, the mentioning the word friend. That is the only problem. He should not mention it, the word friend. He should use it in Arabic, not in English. Because it says the wajah friend. The wajah Arabic word. Friend is an English word. This is the only problem the Muslim they notice in this kind of marriage. And this is supposed to be marriage. Okay? And then he says... Uh, and then, you know, like uh, the correct thing is to say a friend marriage, not uh, not marriage a friend. What, what is that? I don't know. Translation is weird. And uh, and the illusion that the sheikh brought a new image of marriage. So he's saying, no, the, the, the sheikh did not bring new marriage. This is this is a practice. This is halal, you know. No, he did not do that. Okay. Uh, and he said it clearly, I don't call it illegal terms and i think it is the name of the image so like the name the only problem is the name you can do it but don't call it zawaja friend call it zawaja sahiba in arabic i mean don't use our english come on brother we are we are muslim we don't use those uh, uh, kuffar fringe you know words brother so you go to a website and you say i'm seeking to marry a woman you know, whatever, for a month or two, or maybe a year, I don't know. Uh, we will meet in the hotel every uh, every while to have boom boom. What do you think? You know, the Muslim, they say to us <coughs> that Islam is a conservative religion. This is what you think, like they were burqa and, you know, Islam is the most lousy you know, in the Middle East, we 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 call Islam. Uh, what, what they what they call that thing in your in your pant? You know, the 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 rubber thing. You know, the one hold your your pant to your waist. So we we call Islam Islam the religion without rubber. It's very easy to take off your pant. The fastest pant take off. 
You do not even, and always they have a problem for those six things. I mean, uh, sorry, solution. So easy. Read my book, Sex and Allah, and you will see what I'm talking about. They have tons of marriages, man. And this is not new. The Arab before Islam, they used to that. You know, even they used to exchange women. Actually, Muhammad himself, he mentioned exchanging women in the Quran. If we go in the Quran, Let us see. <clears throat> if we go to chapter sixty six. Chapter 66. And we read verse number 5. When Aisha and the other wife of Muhammad, they made a strike against Muhammad because he is a very, very bad person. Sleeping around, cheating on them, to the point the enemies there's two enemies between the wives, like they are two aggressive women who they are controlling two parties of the wives of Muhammad. Both of them, they became now partner launching war against Muhammad. And the Quran accused them that those two women, their heart is indeed inclined. And if they back up each other against him, which means against Muhammad, Truly Allah is his protector and Jibreel and every righteous among those who believe. Here you see how stupid the Quran is. I mean, the guy, he is a prophet of Allah. Having a fight with two wives, they are five foot short, uh, uh, tall. And yet he need the backup, not only of Allah, to protect him from, from them. No, Jibreel is involved. And brother, the prophet was so strong. Not only he needed the protection of Allah and Jibreel from Aisha and Hafsa, he needed the protection of every righteous Muslim, Taliban, Jihad, uh, Hamas, Al-Qaeda, all of them. They will join him to protect him from Aisha and Hafsa. Every believer. And furthermore, the angels will back him up. All of this to have a fight with two women. I mean, if you need all this support to fight two women, what you would do if, if, if their mother-in-law, if the mother-in-law involved? I mean, you are out, you are outnumbered then. For two women, the, the Muslim, they say to you, the George Bernard show, he says, if the prophet was alive now, he can solve the problem of the world while he's drinking coffee in the morning. And by the way, Bernard Shaw never said absolutely that. This is fabrication of Muslims. This guy, he can solve the problems of the world during, during drinking coffee in the morning. Look at him. He made fabrication, fabricated verses in order to control his wives, claiming that if they back up each other against him, which means Muhammad, truly Allah is a protector. Okay, Allah, come. The women are attacking me. Okay, I'm going to hide behind you. Okay, Allah is not enough. Jibreel, Jibreel, come. And then Jibreel is not enough. Allah is not enough. So we need every right. I mean, if Allah protect you, what do you need from the rest? If Allah is God. I mean, do you see how silly is that? Now, I have to admit with Muhammad, women are dangerous, man. I mean, their nails are so sharp. So two women... Ten fingers with long nails. But at that time, they don't do those nail stuff, you know, so it's more safe. I'm assuming they don't have high heels too. So what are you worried from? Like women today are really risky. I mean, come on, you know. She can, pff, they go to the saloon and they spend 10 hours doing sharpening the nails. Like, pff, 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 pff. She go out of the saloon, she is ready to kill. You know, they, you feel like you are, you don't see her like, oh, she's, she's like an eagle, you know. She's eager. What, what's your name, uh, Jessica? Oh, okay. Well, change it. Make it eagle, Jessica. Please, you know. I mean, you don't. The name doesn't fit you anymore. You, you look like an eagle now, and my neck is the target. So, 
if those women are exist in the time of Muhammad, I would understand. If they have those high heels, which is like a missile, go in your head, I would understand. If they have maybe the paper spray, I would understand. Or they had the stunning gun, I understand. Or even the guns, American women, they carry guns these days. You know, they are cowboy, cowgirls. So, uh, but they don't have any of this. So why Muhammad he needed? And then he says, it says, maybe, maybe if he divorce you all and give him exchange concert better than you. Do you see the word exchange? Anyone notice the word exchange? Any Muslim can tell us what exchange means? Exchange concert. This concert business is a big business in some countries. Anyone can tell us? Exchange? How we can exchange the women? You see, already it says divorce them. Okay, so you divorce them. What exchange mean? The answer is very simple. If you read my book, you will see the Arab, they practice something, exchange wives, which means you take mine, I take yours, even for a certain period of time or forever. So Abdul, he said to Abdullah, Hey, Abdullah, are you bored? I have my wife in my bed for the last three years. What about you? Take my wife, I take yours. Abdul and Abdullah, they agree. The women, they exchange the bed and the husbands. Even in Arabia, men, let us say you have, you, you heard of a man, he is very smart, very wise, maybe, uh, very noble, maybe, you know. So you want to have a son who is like this guy. So what do you do? You can believe it or not. You can read my books. You sent your wife to sleep with this guy, and if the guy accept, he will do, he will become the stud, you know? So he will take your wife, he will keep having sex with her until he make her having a child from him. And then he will send her and the trunk is full back to the husband. Muhammad, he made, or he made it clear, that Islam is religion of sexuality. He said, my religion is nikah, which means to F each other. And the one who stay away from nikah, he is not of me. And the funny here, by the way, the Muslim, uh, they call this chapter, nikahu al muta. I mean, how that can be called marriage then? The word nikah means to F. The word muta is for pleasure, sexual pleasure. The Prophet of Allah, he said, you see here the translation, it says that marriage is part of my sunnah. Nowhere the word marriage is mentioned. It's nikah. It's part of sunnah. And whoever does not follow my sunnah to F women around, he is not of me. And I want you to be great in number so I can be proud in front of other nations. So he have a mission too. You want, he wants you to F a lot. That will mean me more babies. And you don't have to be responsible for them. Don't worry, Allah will be responsible. That's why we find them in the street cleaning shoes and cars. Right? Uh, someone saying, Jesus said in Luke, bring my enemy who don't want me to be their king. Yeah, they are just an idiot. Jesus is speaking parable, speaking about that one day, the Lord, God, which him, in the judgment day, those who went against him, they will be punished. 
So you are a silly person. Jesus never killed anyone. But yes, in the judgment day, Jesus will send hundreds of millions of and billions to hell. And you say to us where Jesus says I am, where uh, Jesus said I am God, worship me. You just post it. So here we notice that this is the religion of Muhammad. Go find the women for two days, three days, have fun. Do boom boom. It's okay. Everything is halal. One of the things the Muslim they say Islam is a religion of al fitra. What al fitra mean? They say to you in the natural state of a human being. But the natural state of a human being, he will be like an animal. Because this is what natural state means. There's no rules. If he see a woman, if a man he see a woman, he like her, then he do what the dogs do. This is what fitra is. He do not need to behave. He do not have any civil, you know, life. He don't have any rules. He don't have anything to say uh, bad or, or good. This is fitra, right? So Muhammad obviously he insists he wants you to go to the fitra to the time where you see a woman you like her. Hey, you know, let us do it. Okay, go ahead. That is Islam. Do we have any Muslim here of obligation for what we are saying? Anyone? Uh, no chain, he is saying. Did Jesus call women dogs? You see, uh, no chain. Uh, pause the verse and people will laugh at you. Because you idiot. Jesus, he blessed that woman, the same, the same, very, very same woman. This is why we say, you know, when Muslims, they try to debate you about your Bible, they are copy-paste liar. Jesus, he blessed the same woman. And he spoke about her great faith. And he did what she asked for. What Jesus was saying, that the Jews, they say, don't cast your bread to the dogs. Those are the enemies, the Aramaic, who they are the enemies of the Jews. So Jesus was saying to her, don't you know what the Jews they say? That you are Aramaic, I am from Israel. But later, Jesus said to her that your faith is great, and he praised the women for her faith. So you are a liar again, and he did a miracle there, which nobody can do. While you're a prophet, he called everybody dogs, not only women, but let us go with your mommy, as long as you mention he called women dogs. What is going to interrupt? A Muslim prayer. A dog. A woman. A donkey. Do you see it? The Messenger of Allah says, In case there is not before him an object, like the back of a saddle, a Muslim Salat prayer would be cut off, actually would be damaged, or not cut off, by passing of a woman, a donkey, and a black dog. Do you see it? And you're a prophet, he order you in chapter 4, verse 34, to beat women as if they are dogs and donkeys. And actually, in America, if you beat a dog or a donkey, you go to jail. So we can say that in America, dogs have more right than Muslim women in the heart of Islamic countries. Ask anyone who live in America, who's an American citizen or live in America, can you beat dogs in America? What will happen to you if you beat dogs? You will be humiliated. People will be disgusted of your behavior. People will stop talking to you and the police will arrest you. For what? For beating dogs. In your religion, you beat women until their skin is greener than their clothing. And Aisha, she said, I never saw a believing, a suffering woman as much as a believing woman. Read it. Who is the one who said, I never saw a suffering woman? Aisha said that a lady came wearing a green veil 
and complained to her, to Aisha, of her husband and showed her a green spot in her skin caused by beating. It was the habit of the ladies, like see, see the ladies are habit, they have a bad habit, brother, they support each other. This is not because this is wrong, no. The ladies, they have a habit to support each other. So when Allah Messenger came, Aisha, she said, I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing women. Do you see it? So Aisha, she witnessed that the most suffering women in the world, you see, Aisha, she lived between people who they are supposed to Jews and there's a Christians, whatever, you know? So she is comparing between a believing woman, a Muslim, and non-believing women. And she come with the conclusion, Aisha saying that, not me, I never saw a suffering woman as much as a believing woman. What do you think? And then the Prophet of Allah, he encouraged the man to beat the women and he took his side and he never asked him about why you did beat her. And instead of that, he gave him a verse saying, beat them. And not only that, you're a prophet, he said, that this woman, he said to her, oh, you need to know that you cannot leave this man until he tastes your sexual juice. And you taste his sexual juice. What kind of a prophet this prophet is? Look what the Muslims translation is. They know that it's unlawful for you to remarry Rifat. The Muhammad, he come with a rule, which is more stupid from the previous, we said, the, the Messiah and the Muta. This, this rule is, if a Muslim man, he divorces his wife three times, she can't get back to the husband unless she go and test another juice of a different Muslim man. And you know what I'm talking about. The Muslim translation saying, Muhammad said to her, you cannot go and remarry Rifa unless Abdul Rahman had sexual intercourse with you. The fact, it doesn't say that. It says, until he tastes your juice and you, and he, and you taste his juice. Check it out. This is why we say, you know, if you want to study a religion, any religion, you have to speak the language, other people will lie to you. Look, here the Muslim, they have given translation for the same story. He says, unless, until you taste his sweetness, and he tastes your sweetness. But there's not, it doesn't say, asilatahu. If we take the word asila, and we put it in the Islamic dictionary, what we will find, let me show you. Hmm? I will open Islamic dictionary and I will post the word Asila. All right, look with me. I can copy actually in the front of your eyes the word which is in Arabic. Oh, this is a link, it's not. Let us type it. Read and love. Muhammad saying to the Muslim women, You cannot go back to your previous husband until what? Until what? No, we are typing in English. Hold on. It is the sexual organ of the man and the woman. So Muhammad is saying, until he tastes your vagina and you taste his penis. Let me find Arabic English because now I have to use English translation. Give me a second. Actually, hold on. We can use Google translation. I mean, do you see how filthy this cult is? A prophet of God is talking, saying to the man and the women, to the women, the husband is there supposedly. You have to taste, he's saying to the women, you have to taste his. <clears throat> Let us translate into English in the front of your eyes. 
Please be my witness. And again, this is an Islamic website. I have nothing to do with it. Here it says, uh, the two families, this is wrong translation, it says, the true productive organ of the man and the women. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> But let me find it in Arabic English. That will make it easier. There's no need for Google translation. Uh, let's see. I think we go here. I mean, this website is a stupid. You click in the top, let me show you. You click in the top, it shows you where you should go. But when you move your mouse, it doesn't, see like here, you need to go there. The second I go down, maybe I should, okay, how we can go there? Okay, let's see. Maybe here now, let us see. And, eh? the banner is not even working. Okay, let's see if we type. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Al Asila. Let's see. Here it's coming the honey. But this is not really. We need, I think we need to put as it is in the hadith. Uh, let us copy it anyway already you saw it but you know just for <sighs> what a stupid cult, isn't it? And then the Muslim, they will come to us and they will say, uh, for some reason it's coming Arabic, English, for some reason it should not say this, it should say the, the orgasm. Uh, we are stuck with it. Let us see. I mean, why in the Arabic, Arabic, it's coming orgasm or the male private part and the female private part. Uh, maybe I need to change. Give me a second. Let's see. See, when I put it in the Arabic dictionary, look what it's giving me. Oh, Sayla, I think the way the, the uh, okay, let us post, let us copy the same, maybe the Tashkil. Oh, you don't, you don't see the screen, hold on. Mm -hmm. yeah there is something wrong in the website actually we showed it to you before but there is something wrong for sure you see I copy the same word here where it says uh, oh, let me see 
if we copy the same word here and we put it in the English page it's giving us the front thing see I copy it I paste it here it says honey but it's not if we go here and we click translate to English and this is the word I see the same word we copy it is the man and the women sexual organ so there is something wrong with the website all right and one of the meaning can go can go to uh, to you know sweetness etc but here it's about this is why the Muslim themselves when they translate they don't say they don't say a test in your honey as much as they are saying it is sexual intercourse this is the purpose of it so what is the honey and the word usayla is the male and the female organs is not even just the the liquid it is the organs you have to taste that and as you see this is an Islamic dictionary I have nothing to do with it you know but when you put it in Arabic Arabic it comes different from Arabic English for some reason uh, oh hold on you know what just wait it's I think okay so you see the pronunciation of the word is different with the tashkil so like the many tashkil so here we go this is the one mentioned in the hadith finally we found it it is orgasm so in the top there is like there's many pronunciation for the word but the word in the hadith is al-usayla al-usayla it is orgasm so Muhammad saying to her, you cannot go back to the husband and let, unless you taste his private part and his orgasm and he tastes your private part and your orgasm. Uh, CP, you are missing so much material in the Bible. You were non-Christian, you would be loving, exposed the faith of the Bible. My friend, I will go with you to say whatever you want against the Bible. I understand you are a Muslim, you are an Abdul, and you are angry. You cannot answer us. You need to change the topic. We are showing you your prophet saying that your, 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 your wife, if you divorce her, she can't come back to you unless she put a male member inside her mouth. And what you do answer? This. Why? Because you are desperate trying to change the topic. Secondly, you idiot. If the Bible is for the fifth, how your prophet he say and he swear, I swear by you and the one who sent you. When a man he say, I believe in you and the one who sent thee, and it is a book of faith as you say, that's mean Muhammad is filthy. So thank you very much. This is your prophet and this is Sahih Hadith, where he grabbed the Torah, he put it in the top of a cushion, showing too much respect to it, but you call it book of faith. You, you as a Muslim, Ali, a potato, you insult your prophet, saying that your prophet is a hypocrite, false, corrupt man. He lie when he say, I believe in thee. So I'm asking you in front of everybody. When Muhammad, he said, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee, take an oath in the Torah. Was he telling the truth or this is a book of faith? watch what Ali will say guys there's one of two options Ali is going to start to taste Asila and he will put something in his mouth and he will never open it again until we forget about the topic or Ali will give us an answer saying that his prophet is a liar so which one you will do Ali are you testing Asila now Are you doing what your prophet said? You obviously understood the, the hikmah. Guys, look, what is the answer? You, you potato, I'm asking you. You're a prophet, he took an oath in the Torah. You call the Bible is full of faith. I'm asking you. When Muhammad, he took an oath saying, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. Was he swearing and believing in the book of faith as you call it? And the coward you, you will not answer me. Why? Because you are a coward. You are a son of Zawajul Misyar or Zawajul Muta. You are not a man. Why you are changing topic? And what have to do with misunderstood? The Prophet says, I, I, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. I want an answer.
The women, he said, the women, she said his private part is useless. So the answer to say to the women, go and put his a, a private part in your mouth. This is the answer. And you stupid idiot, he said to her, you cannot get back to your previous husband until you do this with him. So it doesn't matter if he's a private part or walking or not. <laughs> now answer me. Did your prophet lie when he say, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee? You will not, right? Because you are a coward. The Quran confirmed the Torah, the Quran confirmed the Gospel, the Quran confirmed our books. And not only that, your stupid Quran keep calling us people of the book. So if our book is not exist, how you call us people of the book? I mean, Islam is the most stupid religion ever. What the Quran called the Christians and the Jews, people of the book. Okay, but you keep saying to us, our book is corrupt. So how do you call us people of the book? Sam Shamoon, he lost his hair. Should I call him the guy with the hair? He don't have it no more. So either you eat it, we have a book, or we don't. Hmm. Just to show you how stupid you are, Hassan means good, you idiot. Hassan is authentic. Hassan is a degree of the authenticity of, of the hadith. You are a donkey. And because you are a donkey, get out of here. I'm not going to waste my time with kids. Hassan is not authentic, you donkey. Who is the stupid you told? This is a rank of, of authentic. This is why those are books of Sahih. Stupidity is amazing. This is not authentic. It's Hassan. Do you know what Hassan means? Hassan means good. One of the names of the grandsons of your prophet is Hassan al Hussein. So now Hassan is bad. So you call someone good when it's not good. And it's not authentic. But we call it good. <laughs> we call it good. It's not good. But it says Hassan. It's not good. But Hassan mean good. This is what Hassan mean in Arabic. Hassan, the grandson of your prophet, his name is Hassan. Does that mean he's bad? Anyway, religion of sex. If you read, if you like to read more about the cult of the understupidity, my two books, Six and Allah, very number one and two, will make you see what you cannot believe. You will see in my books that even all the family of Muhammad, they used to do boom, boom, men to men. Men to men. And everything we show there, it is from Islamic reference. This is where Muhammad is born, and this is his family. And they say to you, Muhammad was born from the most noble family even the arab they said well why allah will not choose someone he is from a good family of Quraysh. you know why Anyway, we had enough for now. I hope you guys have a good time. And uh, still the previous video, not too many people watch it as we as I was expected. You know, people like short time. People come in here for chat, not really to support us, most of them. Uh, before we finish uh, what we are doing here, uh, I'm, I have a warning for those who come to the chat. I, yesterday there was some females fighting in the chat. Those are the one Muhammad described. They are dangerous. Any women, and I'm speaking about women now. I'm not against women, as you know. But any woman, she will come here because she is a fight with some other women. I will block you both. And we will block the first one who start the issue. There's a crazy woman. She keep coming and she keep fighting with others. Please block her. Anytime you see this woman. We don't want, uh, you know, teenage people here. There's people, they grow in age, but they are still kids. 
No, you are fighting over Bedi Bedekir, Manikir. Hmm? And the admins are ladies, so they will deal with them. Anytime you see women fighting, just black them. Bye bye. All right. Doesn't matter who. Uh, do we have any Muslim have any comment? I don't know. Yesterday they told me there was two women they were fighting. Read my request in Patreon community. What was your request, my friend? Why you don't say your request here? You are trying to give me more job to do. <clears throat> give me your request. Uh, are you sure? No. Who cares where I'm from? Let us say I am from the moon. Uh, okay, the person did not post his record. Okay. Uh, keyboard coward. Well, you are on the keyboard too, Mr. Jones, aren't you? Are you brave now? I mean, people are really funny, you know. Uh, do we have any Muslim? Maybe, maybe later today I will go live on air and I will open my pal talk for people to call me there if you are a Muslim, only Muslims. If there's any Muslim would like to call, I might open my pal talk program so we can receive calls from Muslims if we get a chance to do so. Thank you, uh, Christian. Thank you. Uh, can you talk about Muhammad talking about uh, Ethiopian? Well, we can make a special topic talk about racism and Muhammad, not only about the Ethiopian, because Muhammad he mentioned the Ethiopian, like the one who will destroy the Kaaba is Ethiopian, uh, the one who will pick up the stones one by one from the Kaaba is Ethiopian. Uh, 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 Shaitan, he described him that he looked like an Ethiopian. Uh, the most, according to Muhammad, the most person Allah he hate is a black man, you know. So we can make a topic about all those things. Do we have any Muslim? Yeah, pal talk is easy because my uh, Skype is became crazy. I mean, I open it, I find like 10,000 texts coming to me. I mean, and it's, it's really this program is stupid. There's no control of it. And not only that, if you if you text me a year ago, your text is there in the year ago. It's not like it, another program was where they show you a new text, you know. <clears throat> uh, let us see. Any Muslim? He answered, he requested about your book in Arabic language so he can show his mom. So what is the answer? What the, what the topic to show your mom? Guys, you waste your time. If you make a request, pause the whole request. Otherwise, you are wasting my time and your time. What show you in my book, my mom? What does that mean? All right. Do you have bodyguards? I do not need bodyguards. Who dare to get it close to me? Let him try. I'm the last one who needed. Do we have any Muslim? Anything she doesn't believe you? Okay, why you don't get my book and you translate to her and you show her the Arabic in text, the text Arab, because I have Arabic, I have English in the book. Get the book. Uh, 
the daughter of Muhammad was killed by Umar. First of all, Muhammad never have a daughter. Muhammad is a potent man. He cannot do it. I believe strongly, Muhammad, he cannot have sex. This is why if you go in the Quran, there is a verse speaking about a person who accused Muhammad that he is cut off. What cut off? The Muslim, they say, cut off from having children. Well, that's very close. The man, he's saying, Aptar, Aptar, you are cut off. This is something they say for somebody, he cannot have sex. Chapter 108, if you read it, it doesn't mean anything. This is a stupid chapter. I mean, this is chapter 3 verses. Have you ever heard of a God? He sent a chapter 3 verses. What is that? So pray for Allah. Grace is merciful. Okay, this actually, this is that part of the chapter. This is additional. See, the Muslim, they corrupt the Quran. They're adding things. It's not there. It's not there. To thee have granted the fountain. What fountain? What, what, I mean, have you ever heard of somebody saying to somebody, we grant you a fountain. Shouldn't you tell us what fountain? That is a fountain of a sperm. And I challenge you to tell me it's a fine fountain of water because Muslims, they have river of waters in heaven. What fountain? What fountain? If you read the interpretation for this kawthar, you will find that it is a water, or sorry, it is a liquid, which is uh, very white, the foam, the foam white, you know? So speaking about sperm, why? Because the, the purpose of this is a sper about sperm. Therefore, pray to the Lord and sacrifice. The Muslims, they say, we don't sacrifice. We are not religion of sacrifice. In the same time, we find them sacrifice nonstop. And then, for he has thee, will be cut off. Look what? Allah saying to Muhammad, the one who accuse you, that you are cut off, he is cut off. Have you ever heard of a, such a debate? Have you ever heard of a God? Saying the guy who said to you, what about you make him have a son? Then pe people will see that he's not cut off. Very easy, you're God. So God involved in the fight and say, hey, the one who says to you, you are cut off, he's cut off. Hmm? <laughs> right this is religion and this is God and for those who they are talking about Omar al-Khattab he killed Fatima maybe we'll make a uh, we'll make a special topic about it, uh, you know, uh, just the whole topic should be about it so we can read together and see the reference and see what's wrong with this religion. But I assure you, Muhammad never have children. All those are children from the previous husbands of Khadija. Khadija, she have two husbands before Muhammad. And obviously Khadija, she have no problem of having kids. It's Muhammad who have a problem. And additional to that, Muhammad, he married Khadija when he was she way older. So those are kids from the previous husband. The reason Fatima is the one considered as his daughter, because when he married her mother, she was still young. You know what I'm saying? The others, they were growing. So they will not call him daddy. I thought that Muhammad's son died, he was just a baby. That's, a, that's not true. Even Aisha, she was making fun of Muhammad, saying he don't even look like you. When the son of Mary the Copt, Mary the Copt is a slave. She sleep with whatever way she want. Even they accused her that she was sleeping with her cousin. But then when they went to her cousin, they found him that he is, he don't have a penis. Supposedly, according to the story. But doesn't mean that it, it's only him. She is a slave, she is a free. I mean, she sleep with the slaves. She lived between slaves, she sleep with the slaves. So when she get she got a child because Muhammad was sleeping with her too. And Muhammad was so desperate to have a son. So he considered the baby from that woman, from her. But Aisha, she got him busted. She said, don't you see, he don't even look close to you. All right? 
anyway guys uh, we will be back maybe later tonight if we can I hope we have a good time together but have you ever heard of a God says the one who says you are cut off he is cut off that is something if Allah is God he will say to Muhammad I'm going to show them that you are not cut off do you remember guys the story of uh, uh, Moses <clears throat> When the Jews, they accuse him that he is cut off or he have a problem with his sexual organ. You remember it? What Allah he did? Allah, he made a stone, steal the clothing of Moshe, and she ran the stone with, with the clothing and his credit card and his cell phone. And, and he was naked. She waited at the stone. Allah waited until, the, until Musa jumped in the water to wash. Look, it says here. Abu Huraira reported that the messengers, blah, 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 say, etc. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let us show you where the Prophet says that. Here it doesn't mention anything about Muhammad. Okay. Here we go. Narration from Allah, from Allah, from the message of Allah, from, 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 from Abu Huraira, the father of the cats, he said that Banu Israel used to take a bath naked. They take bath naked, that's new. And they look at the private part of one another. What the horrible thing? Moshe, peace be upon him, however, took a bath alone in privacy. And they said, like, you know, start gossiping about him. By Allah, nothing forbid Moses. The Jews, they say by Allah, the Jews. Hmm. Nothing forbid Moses to take a bath alone, except he have scorter harina. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. And if you do not know what the Scortal Harina is, you can search Prophet Google Peace upon him. All right. So he have something in his, or, you know, sexual organs. You know, I don't know. I'm, I'm not the doctor. So anyway, so the Jews, they made an accusation against Musa. So Musa's, he was uh, very upset. Oh, well, you know, they don't talk about my private part. My private part is so beautiful. Don't talk about it. And look what Allah, he did. So he, Musa, once. So now Allah, he, he heard them. You know, Allah, he is all-knowing. Uh, come on. <laughs> yes, they are, in, they are in Israel. They are talking in Hebrew. But Allah is all-knowing, you know. And he is, uh, so once Musa, he went to the bath and he placed his clothes on the stone and the stone moved with his clothing. And then Musa ran after it. Saying, oh stone, my cloth, oh stone, my cloth. This true story, by the way, it happened to me too. You know? But it's a little bit different. You know, it was not a stone who uh, took, uh, you know, it was a cat. It took my, uh, you know, my uh, my hamburger. So I was chasing the cat and says, oh cat, my hamburger. Oh cat. And, uh, uh, and look, Musa, he was not surprised for the stone taking his stuff because it looked like at that time it was normal stones do that. I mean, like, Moses, he was not, like, astonished, like, what is happening? Stone is moving? No, he changed the stone. Normal things. Moses always sees stones moving and running with the stuff. It's, at that time, it's very normal, brother. You know, like, it's not the first time he saw a stone running with the clothing. <laughs> I mean, the clothing in the top of it, and they never failed. Look how balanced this. This is uh, the, the three uh, three axes, uh, uh, what, what do you call it, the, the, for the cameras, you know? Three axes balance. You know, like main stabilization. So his wallet, his clothes, his, his everything in the top of the rock, and the rock is moving. And Musa did not notice that this is a miracle. Like a stone is moving. No, this was normal. Like Musa's always, whenever he go, he see stones move, moving. Stone move here, stone move here. You know, if Musa's at that time, brother, if you want to sit in a place, he don't go and bring a stone to sit in it. The stone come to him. It's normal. So Musa's did not. He is not astonished by what happened because it's normal, you know. Just I'm sharing with you some observation. And then he keep chasing the stone until, until, you know, so until uh, my clothes and Ben Israel had the chance to see his penis. And then the bad news for the Jews. Look at this. Man. Praise be to Allah. They said that his penis is the most 
penis. So how come Allah did not make a miracle like this to Muhammad? The guy he accused him that he's cut off. He's cut off. There's something wrong with his. Shouldn't Muhammad, his God, do the same as Moses happened to him? Is it this is the same God? You know what I'm saying? But anyway, you know, for us Middle Eastern, we witness a lot of things. In the Middle East, you see someone running with your wallet, that's normal. You go in the bus, you almost you come out naked, no problem. Uh, a woman, she go in the bus, she will be molested all over, no problem. So those things, are, and the stone moving is one of them, normal things, you know. If Saddam Hussein says stone moving, Saddam Hussein is right, that's it, who dare to say no? They move, and they steal clothing too, yeah. If the secret police come to your house and they kidnap your son, the stone took him, not the police. Don't you see what stones can do? Don't you remember what happened to Moshe? True story. If you if you ever you went home and uh, when you are leaving, you notice that your the money from your wife is gone. It's not your wife who took it. It's the stone. She will point her finger at the stone and the girl and she said, "Look, here we go." Maybe she will put a dollar next to it. And then you have to believe it's a stone who took it. Otherwise, how the dollar is there? It's a true story. Yeah. <clears throat> what Muhammad motivation to talk about? Uh, this is what the, the education of Muhammad, what you can say. I mean, stupid uh, fiction stories. What is the motivation? This guy, he want to show that he knew, you know? And most of the stories, by the way, he took them from the Jews. But I'm not sure about this one, you know? But there's tons of stories. He took them from the Jews. This guy, he is a storyteller. He find that people are to, to earn attention. You have to be a storyteller. In the time where there's no entertainment, there's no TV. So people sit and that we have the prophet with us. Okay, prophet, tell us something today. So let us tell you about Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great, he have two horn. And the reason he have two horn, brother, because when he came to his people and he told them, brother, sister. Prophet, look your name. He can do it, people. I said that they ask him with him. Why do you name what called your name? First of all, a good name means the two horn, like the horn of the cow. So he came to the people and he told them, You are going to believe in Allah. They said to him, We want to believe in Allah. And they hit him with the hammer in the top of his head. And then when they hit him in his head with the hammer, he got the first horn. Boing, boing, boing. And then Allah, he made him from death again. And then Allah sent him again. And he said to them again, you have to believe in Allah. And then they hit him again in the second tide, for the second time, in the top of the head with a hammer. And he got the second horim. And this is why he was called the person of the horim. Thank you very much. This is Muhammad. A person who went to his people, told them, believe in Allah. And then they hit him with the hammer in his head and he died and he got the first horn. And then he come, Allah raised him from death again, and he sent him again to tell them to believe in Allah. And then they hit him again with the second hammer or the second time. And he got the second horn. Why? He became a cow now? Like he was a man and a, and, 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 and a cow? The story is very simple. This is a Roman king. He used to wear a hat with the two horn. So look how the story changed from a guy wear a hat with two horn to a person who his people hit him in his head and then he got the first horn, brother. I mean, Islam always have a solution for anything, including the Zawaj Muta and the uh, marriage, uh, Monsieur. Anyway, guys, 20 minutes ago we said we are leaving. What's wrong with you? Unbelievable. Yeah, but those are true stories. Don't make fun of them. Do you remember the story of the guy who made fun of the miswak and then he inserted in his anus? Do you know what happened, brother? Do you know what happened? I don't know if anyone have that link can post it. Allah, he cursed him and he made him deliver a child after nine months. Mm -hmm. If you put the miswak in your anus, you as a man is going to have a baby. Yes, brother. And that baby brother was a rat. Really? A rat? Why? The miswak is from the rat kind? 
and then the guy he gave birth to the rat and he screamed and then suffered for three days and he died true story can you make fun of it in the middle east they will kill you immediately it's very convincing i mean come on so all this story who there in the middle east who is a president in the middle east there to make fun of the story there's a lawyer in egypt he made a case he made a case uh, against the Sheikh of Azhar, saying that Sheikh of Azhar, he have a duty to clean Al-Bukhari and Muslim and all those books from all the stupid stuff there. The highest court in the country rejected the guy and they, uh, they, they uh, I heard that they, they, uh, they freeze him from working as a lawyer anymore. Because how you say there's garbage stuff there? How dare you? This is not garbage, this is a true story. All of those are true stories. And Muhammad is a doctor, you like it or not. You know? He is good in uh, zoology, he is good in uh, uh, physiology, he is good in any, any kind of ology stuff. All ology stuff, you know, he is so very good in it. If a man have orgasm first, the baby will look like the, uh, the, the man. And if the women have orgasm first, the baby will look like the girl and uh, will be a girl too. And this is a true story. And uh, many uh, scientists, they uh, discover that. Certain state from Japan. Hmm? This is what they say to us. Yeah. Anyway, someone saying where to download my books. You can get my books in certain languages for free in, from for poor poor countries like Indonesia, uh, Russia, etc., Albania, uh, Serbia, Croatia. You know, some countries who they don't have a great income. We made our our books for them for free. So the admin can post the link for you. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And please respect Prophet Muhammad. I mean, Dr. Muhammad. He is not a, a storyteller, although it's true, proven to be true. And there's many scientific, scientific proofs of them. Uh, NASA support what he say. You know, NASA, they said the moon split, you know. And uh, George Bush, he uh, witnessed that it's time is peace. And uh, Muhammad Ali, he said the word Islam mean peace. And uh, that will make us, uh, you know, all over the place. Because we have a bunch of idiots who lie to us, but the truth is totally different. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. Until we see you again, Christ is Lord. Islam is a joke. And we laugh at it. But still, we love the Muslims and we try to save them. Muslim, don't be offended. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at your prophet. But you can be a joke if you want, if you believe in such a thing. In the year 2021, can you believe it? Somebody will believe in such a thing in the front of you on the screen. However, it can be useful for you. Try it. Don't come first. Let us see if the child will look out like your wife. Just don't come first. You know what? Hold yourself for the coming year or two years, three years. Don't be the first person to come first. Let us see how the child will look like. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Take care, God bless, and see you soon. Bye-bye.